What does it take to navigate the complex worlds of politics, business, and social change? My guest today has just done that. From the halls of parliament to the boardrooms, one woman has defied expectations. She's former parliamentarian, seasoned entrepreneur, and passionate advocate. Siham is breaking barriers and setting new standards for leadership as she shares her insights on building resilient organizations and empowering women to lead. Who's there for you? Not all your friends, not all your colleagues. And I remember, of course, very well that, uh, and I regret that, that I used to neglect my relationships while chasing my career goals. You know, I skip birthdays, baby showers, weddings, even from close friends, close families. Uh, I lost people because of that. And still I kept on going, surrounding myself with people that are work related. I was only focused on work and achieving that next goal, that next dopamine shot. Well, one of the pivotal moments uh, after being rejected was, was for sure letting go of the ego and being aware of your ego okay people can say oh you have an ego your ego but you know if your ego really drives decisions in your private life and your work life you really have a problem for myself for example you know um i found myself in a situation where i was successful then i was elected to parliament but actually it is a decision an ego-driven decision because actually what i was already doing with organizations and firms was enough impact so my ego really made me go further because I was like, yeah, I will, I will, I will fix all the problems through politics. That's ego. So I was born in 86 to Moroccan immigrants in uh, Belgium. I was raised there, studied there, worked there, was an entrepreneur, five times founder, a former member of parliament. But as a young woman of color, of course, I face a lot of adversity. It's, it's normal. But through education, hard work um, and luck, don't forget that a lot of luck uh you can transform i transformed this adversity i think into a certain resilience and that sparked actually uh my desire to turn societal hurdles into a driving force for change to give you a heads up we're going to talk about the power of saying no the balancing act between life and work. If we can just like pivot it to that. And finding your purpose, why and how, rejection and resilience and the ego. That's that's will be a wrap up. <laughs> okay. okay. Cool. Ask this from the heart. Every day, every subscription, every like, every share means the world to us. It's not about numbers. It's about the incredible community we're building together. We're enriching the world with the knowledge of the experts. We're sharing stories with the great minds, great stories. It's more than just a support when you click to subscribe. It's a journey we're taking together to spread these great minds and even their great, and even their great story. <laughs> cool. Ready for that, Sam? I'm ready. It's a lot. So let's go. <laughs> Today we've got a coach. She's all about transforming high achieving women to break through to a top tier career in life. Joining me today is Siham Al-Kabi, the founder of a woman's view. Siham, how are you? Doing very well. Thank you for the invitation. Lovely to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. Today, it will be scattered interview. It will be different because really? okay. Siham is all about everywhere. And we want to cover everything that we're curious about. So excuse us about the, uh, let's say, the storyboard. All righty, let's get started. I'm so excited. <laughs> Siham, you have worn many hats. Government, politics, entrepreneur, activist, coach. Who is Siham at the core? What is your drive? Yeah, that's quite a story, right? Yeah, um, we're waiting for it. Yeah. So I was born in 86 to Moroccan immigrants in uh, Belgium. I was raised there, studied there, worked there, was an entrepreneur, five times founder, a former member of parliament. But as a young woman of color, 
Of course, I face a lot of adversity. It's it's normal, but through education, hard work, um, and luck, don't forget that a lot of luck, uh, you can transform. I transformed this adversity, I think, into a certain resilience, and that sparked actually uh, my desire to turn societal hurdles into a driving force for change. And that's why I think I have these several hats, because when we talk about change, uh, it's on different, you know, different areas of life. So it can be a nonprofit work um, where I've, you know, founded, designed, implemented uh, award winning empowerment and education programs, but also the entrepreneurial world, world when you work around next gen diversity and inclusion, it's always about impact. It's about trying to align your 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 values, your core beliefs, and actually also a little bit yeah, your experiences to something tangible. And that's what I love to do. I love to take visions, ideas that are purpose-led and really turn them into something that's tangible, achieve results and 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 inspire common goals. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I faced a lot of a lot of hurdles, a lot of failures as well. So if you really ask me like the couple, you know, what, what's in the heart is something I think only the last years I can I can tell you very genuine what it is, because I went from being burnt out, um, confused, bankrupt to now in this moment being more healthy, physical and, and mentally um, resilient. Um, and in a career that I'm proud of, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and like I said, besides consulting, I love coaching high achieving women because we face a lot of challenges and I think it's very, very paramount to have someone, uh, you know, beside you, a mentor, a coach, a guide, whatever you want to, you, you need in, in a certain phase of your life that can be there and uh, with you and do this with you. You have to go through it yourself, but it's really nice to have someone who went through the same and, you know, um, just guides you through it. Uh, really starting from purpose, not from a business case. <laughs> okay, you mentioned change in, in your story. Let's dig deeper, really, in the personality or in the, let's say, uh, beliefs you have gained from burnt out into at least fulfillment okay change itself you know the firm saying is like the only fixed thing in life is change so yeah. what cha what's your relationship with change how do you feel about it and how do you now after you learn the lesson how do you deal you know or handle? yeah that's actually a, a good question because uh change indeed may be uh vague for, for a lot of people it's something different and it can be on different face on your life it's something else and uh, uh, on different levels of your life as well so like I said I was always on top of my game going like a high speed train uh, always had these clear short long-term goals and accomplishments and then when my life took an unexpected turn mm -hmm. you know in one day I went from doing really well to hitting rock bottom and experiencing that confusion, that stress, that anxiety as well, um, the rejection had such a huge impact on my mental health, life, career, that it forced me to slow down. And it's in that slowing down um, that, that, that I realized that rock bottom can become fertile ground. For me, it was, the change was that after 15 years of, um outer success you know uh titles uh, achievements accolades um who is see him i actually went quite far of my values and beliefs certainly when i went into politics it's a system it's a toxic environment that actually was quite far away of, of who i really am and, and and want to be so um i personalized myself with success so and that's okay when you only uh, uh, experience success but the moment you experience failure uh, rock bottom you you personalize yourself as well with that with those failures so I, I, suddenly I felt nothing I felt a nobody uh, the woman who empowered people uh, until the day they could say, look in the mirror and could say I am somebody was the person I became the person that that 
couldn't say that anymore. I, 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 the only thing I could say was you're nobody. And so after putting in all the hard work, introspection, after realizing that I made a lot of ego-driven decisions that I regret, that were not aligned anymore with my views on life, with my beliefs, my core beliefs, it was actually a, a, a chance to change and to reframe, like I said, reframe challenge into these changes. And I could rebuild myself from the ground up, aligning my real values with my new purpose and actions, uh, redefining success, health and wealth. And so it really changed my perspective on what it means to have a successful career and to be at our best. And so these pivotal moments, it's all about accepting. It's about acceptance that, you know, that you're going through things that, you know, you're not in control and you'll have to accept that and that you'll have to let go of the ego of your past success. Um, it's, it's sometimes out of your control, so you better accept it. Exactly. Adapt, but right? It's so that we are so um, we change comes resistance. Of course, we all know that's a dynamic, and actually, it's beautiful. The, the most liberating thing is to accept, because then you can move on. Uh, yeah. The moment you accept that you don't want to go back to what you have lost, uh, the position you had, the work you had, uh, the income you had, the people yeah. that surround you. That's a moment that's so liberating and that's your sign to move on, for sure. Beautiful. Okay, some people call it success, some people call it achievement, fulfillment, whatever you, happiness sometimes, even if it's momentarily, but it's, it's a game to balance yes to opportunities and no to maintain our well-being. So what strategies? Do you recommend to play this game? When to say no so and why? Why to say no? Why to say no? Yeah. And oh, when? Uh, and when? <laughs> That's a good one. So I learned, I, I think a lot, of, a lot of people are actually, they want to be seen and heard and they are people pleasers. Also on the, also are founders and leaders actually that, that should lead by example. And they do it from... Um, you know, from from a, a certain, uh, let me say, a desire to 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 be liked or something, uh, but um, or to achieve something, uh, to have this external recognition. And I think it's important to make know your defaults, to set boundaries. Sometimes, sometimes people Is, say yes just to please the opponent, their manager, yeah. their client. Their... Exactly. The problem is, you know, not the problem. What people should learn and be aware of is that setting boundaries or saying no is not mean or selfish it's actually necessary because without it you will end up feeling stressed confused and even resentful i mean others will respect you less and even take advantage of you so people shouldn't be afraid to set boundaries and actually they should protect them at all costs and learning to say no is difficult i have a lot of women who yeah. uh, in a program that really struggle with saying no um but when an ask doesn't align with your values say no because saying yes is when your heart says no i think it's one of the worst things you can do to yourself um so okay. yeah when we look Just at it as, no. a, as saying no as a price right so it's it's going to be losing this client or losing this customer or is it like gaining I respect that I am specialized in this corner. So don't overwhelm me with extra work yeah. that I will be overwhelmed with. Or, I mean, what's the, how people perceive you when you say no? I think what's truly important is that you stay your ground and learn how to make yourself a top priority because if you don't in the long term uh you will be resentful uh maybe on the short term you're like oh my god i'm losing this client or, or so or, or or whatever uh but if that client doesn't understand for example that you don't work after six six or seven p.m and no. you don't work no, 
It's because you make yourself a top priority because you care about your mental health, your well-being, but also your family, your relationships, then I think it's not a sustainable relationship. I think we should reframe uh, also, you know, um, what, um, for example, employee employee or uh, consultant uh, client relationship is about. And I think if you're really, um, like I said, it's also about how you say no. You have to learn how to say no. And it's, 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 you have to make yourself clear, you know, don't be wishy-washy in your reasoning, just, you know, be very clear. Don't be afraid to be very clear. Uh, there are other ways to say no. You can offer a compromise, you know, even when you want to say yes, but the timing isn't right, just offer a compromise. And sometimes you can also just recommend an, an, another resource, you know, people are oh. afraid to say no uh, because they want very courageous thing to recommend another source. It's like, yeah, why not? Put the competition yeah. in front of you. <laughs> You know, if, 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 if sometimes you don't want to say no because you don't want to appear unhelpful, but you know, if, if someone can, it, it happens to me all the time, they contact me, but, but if I don't have the time, if it doesn't align with my focus, um, in, in, in this phase of my life, then I just, you know, refer to a person that they can contact or I can introduce someone that is also qualified. I mean, uh, like I said, in the end, it doesn't matter how you say no, but you have to just make yourself a top priority, Brilliant. I believe. I love, I love the sequence that we're we're developing this conversation. You mentioned family and you mentioned yeah. work, all right? Yeah. So um, it's very consumed work-life balance. And I have one coach, yeah. friend of mine who says, uh, who said work is not part of life? Work is life. I mean, I spend most of my day at work, so it's better be part of me. So people, the other people just like split it up and put work aside and family aside or person life aside and balance. So what's your take on this? I mean, what's your advice? It's, it's not, you know, it, it's not some, it's not like, there's not like one way uh uh to see this there's no not one angle because it depends on what phase of your life you're in uh but we all know that life is unexpected and an underrated question that we should ask ourselves is who sees you like really sees you without your titles without your job without your accomplishments if you would hit rock bottom who is there for you? Not all your friends, not all your colleagues. And I remember, of course, very well that, uh, and I regret that, that I used to neglect my relationships while chasing my career goals. You know, I skip birthdays, baby showers, weddings, even from close friends, close families. Uh, I lost people because of that and still I kept on going surrounding myself with people that are work related I was only focused on work and achieving that next goal that next dopamine shot mm. so when I hit rock bottom guess what happens you feel isolated you know you're burnt out and you feel isolated and guess what happened next it was those people that I had neglected that state that supported me that were there and so in a very harsh way i realized the importance of nurturing my inner circle and just never like neglect them anymore so today i can say i'm a better daughter i'm a better partner a better ally friend business partner than ever before that's that's really the case and and um i wish uh it, it wasn't that I didn't need this harsh reality and curveball uh, to be aware of this, but I'm so grateful with the people that surround me. And that's why from, you know, working at like a high speed train 24 seven, it's really a choice of mine that I will not do that anymore. I'm now more into, you know, six p working till 6 p.m. Pini. Um, Weekends, I don't post in the weekends, okay? I, mean, I don't want to... I could, say, I could say without you falling on that test or a problem or a challenge, you could not see, right? 
You learn the yeah. lesson. Exactly. And the moment you open your eyes, you cannot close them again, right? <laughs> true, very true. Okay, let's move faster. I mean, sorry for that, but I want to cover all of the things. I try my best. So finding the <laughs> purpose, okay, and um, should I, why, and how? Again, it depends whether it's your purpose as a person that Let's will... Let's say as a person, of course. Well, as a person, it's about, it's about, for me, it's about the reasons of being, of course. We all know the Ikigai. Um, it, it, it really, really, you know, your why is more important than your what. Because, again, people will forget you. It's about doing the right thing, okay? In a world of with titles, um, we often forget what truly matters. And, again, that's a hard truth I learned on my journey at the end of the day. People won't remember you for accomplishment. They will remember you uh, about, on how you made them feel, okay? Uh, the moments that will stick out in memory are the moments that uh, when you're interacted with mm. people, it's about mm. the laughter shared, it's about the impact you had on society, the positive impact you had on their lives, the kind words when times were hard, the uplifting talks uh, with friends or team members when 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 you know when what life if, was what if people perceive you with rejection okay well, you stand rege on this page and you are supposed to give like this presentation in a short or you 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 are speaking to to um in any event to an occasion or something and you face rejection what should we do well, again, you know, if you're aligned with your purpose and, and sometimes you need re rejection to be aligned with your purpose. So this is a nice tic tac we are doing here because, you know, <laughs> uh, actually facing rejection is so hard, but staying stuck is harder. And sometimes oh, re re rejection. I love that. I love that. <laughs> yeah, right. I love, I love that. You love that. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> No one is being rejected. I mean, it's like this door slamming shut loud and, and hard. And I've always been so scared about rejection. Every yeah. no really got under my skin, you know, uh, uh, holding me back from performing, losing my focus. And when I got publicly uh, rejected, I couldn't handle it. It was really hard for me to get a grip on my life again. And then you have the journey of inner work and you come to um, your Ikigai and you're like, you know, let's learn how to pivot, maybe even 180 degrees and, and see this as a compass to a better path. And again, you cannot do this by yourself. Okay, everything I say, I, I, I cannot say this. Uh, it was my work. I, I had to do the work. I embraced the pain. I've put in the work, but I've done it with, you know, it took me three years <laughs> and a lot of investment. Oh, to, yeah, to, yeah. Okay? <laughs> so rejection can clarify goals. It can, again, build resilience because we learn to keep going each rejection uh, with each rejection our skin gets a little thicker okay we learn to keep going and more importantly it teaches humility and empathy it keeps us grounded because wow. learning how to handle rejection helps us become more understanding and humble which makes our relationships with other people better so it's all related rejection is redirection and it's it's okay it's sometimes, sometimes it's just necessary it's, just like you said sometimes it takes you three years sometimes three days to recover but there is something you learn out of it a mindset shift right yes i so, thought wow to face this i mean should i just like move this into my ego i don't care they don't understand <laughs> what i'm talking about <laughs> they do not know what i know so here comes my ego, right? Or should I say, okay, let me learn from this. Next time I'll start with a joke, <laughs> right? So what, what, what strategy works for you? Well, one of the pivotal moments uh, after being rejected was, was for sure letting go of the ego and being aware of your ego, okay? People can say, oh, you have an ego, you have an ego, but you know, if your ego really drives decisions, in your private life and your work life, you really have a problem. For myself, for example, you know, um, I found myself in a situation where I was successful, 
then I was elected to parliament, but actually it is a decision, an ego-driven decision, because actually what I was already doing with organizations and firms was enough impact. So my ego really made me go further because I was like, yeah, I will, I will, I will fix all the problems through politics. Mm-hmm. That's ego. And, you know, it, 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 it drove me to, to really hard times and struggles with my mental health um, because I wanted to go back and prove something. Again, ego. And, 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 and there's nothing to prove. And coming back to what I said before, the mm-hmm. most liberating decision is to move on. So no when one you is aware ex- of the challenge, Joran. Like, what to prove? We don't see you, I mean, yeah. with anything. What? Exactly. Yeah. And you have a challenge when... inside you. Not, yes. They don't know that's... about it. It is. They don't know about it. So you, you, what to prove and what is from where comes this desire? That's what you yes. have to cope with. That's what you need to solve. And going back to where you were before, position, whatever, will not solve that. So you realize that you're clinging to your previous self, the ego of your past success that is holding you back. So you actually have to shift your mind uh, shift. And uh, yeah, just recognize that when something isn't right, for you okay when your journey no longer feels like your own maybe it's time to chart a new course um and and, and just you know um uh, check in if your current path um honors your values does it yeah. align who you are are you evolving or stagnating because when i was sick when i was in this you know doing this deep inner work I learned much more than five years of work. So a lack of development can also dim your inner spark. So letting go is also a growth opportunity. And last but not least, um, you should notice when you begin to compromise your true self. Okay, sacrificing authenticity uh, for comfort Mm. is a really high price to pay. Yeah. Okay, Um, let's, let's like give it a frame. Ego is a bad thing or can be powerful force. Yes. How do we balance ego and humanity? Um, I, th- I think it's 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 always holistic. It's not just taking one thing, like everything we said, whether it was about purpose, doing the right thing, about your relationships, about your boundaries. Your boundaries sometimes also, you know, make you realign again with you know stay grounded and making yourself top priority so if the ego plays then you're like wait a minute pause reflect is this aligned to who i'm truly truly are is this worth you know is it maybe sometimes better to say you know i regret this decision it wasn't meant to be um it's better to let go and to move on or are you really going to hold yourself back because of your ego i think it's always like uh, being very self-aware and surround yourself with, 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 you know, people and sometimes just pause and reflect. I mean, I think working, doing the inner work every day, it can be journaling, it can be, um, you know, a gratitude journal. It can be, um, like I said, uh, just spending enough time with, 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 with your family, with your inner circle, uh, do this self-assessment, alignment audits. It's important to really have this, um, to do the inner work, to do the, it's part of your self-care. And, and, and certainly for people who are in leading positions, if you're, you know, I think it's really important to understand that, that you cannot, you know, you cannot grow if you don't, you know, put in the work yourself and, and being aligned with your values, knowing what you're going to and, and you know, being authentic. Um, I think that's really important. And that's why I, besides my consulting, that's more my business, I do this with this Women Leaders Program. I really see all these beautiful, amazing women, of course, also men, but I focused on women because you need a niche, right? <laughs> and, and, and I also, <laughs> And I also believe that we have different layers. I'm, 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 I'm you know, multicultural, I'm Moroccan, Belgian, uh, I'm a woman, um, entrepreneurial. Uh, it's, it's so many different layers that, that sometimes, yeah, you, people can relate. And that's where you're here for, to reframe those challenges to something you need to relate. And that's what we're trying to do. 
women and high achieving women. What do you have to add for them? Their high achievements. They reach this sea level and they are fighters yeah. and they've done all of everything. They find the purpose, they find reason and they find their way to communicate. They find their skills to say no. Otherwise they won't reach this top, top chain, right? So what Siam can add to their career or success or fulfillment? Oh, well, that's actually also a very, very good, good, good thing you're asking because um, we all face adversity. Okay, we all face life challenges. Maybe you're successful in your career, but what if, if your private life is not okay? Uh -huh. You will not be able to have a sustainable career, and one day it will hit you. You'll get burned out or whatever. And there's so much about glamorized success. But there's always another side, okay? There are extraordinary people in deep pain, even if they are millionaires, even if they have a high social status, even if they are these high, you know, performing leaders, C-level people. And that's why I'm doing this, to, 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 to contribute and impact, because success is moving through the valleys and the peaks, equally embracing what is thrown at us, you know? And what that's also be, success. What can be what can be their pain? I mean, they, they're on the top of the chain. They have money. They have relationships. They have the titles. Can you can you just like share? Medical health grief. Uh, there there's so many things that, uh, that it can be. You know, family situations. Uh, it can be that you're in a toxic work environment. Even you know you're not a company you're, you don't you're not there by yourself maybe the environment is not for you mm -hmm. uh there every day we face so much challenges i mean i thought I, i had everything i thought i had everything under control and there was just one major event that made me overwhelmed confused so i did something wrong i didn't prioritize myself i didn't prioritize the people i loved i didn't prioritize you know my well-being i didn't have my you know i did have bad habits so, you know i have to replace them with good habits. it's it's not about the outside it's not, not again it's not about titles it's about the impact you have and it your legacy should be sustainable so the fact that you can go bankrupt and lose everything what how do you overcome this those are the challenges and all these amazing women that i see all have a challenge okay it's yeah. life yeah. life it's is life. challenging for everyone And it's, it's, uh, I think there were never before, maybe because of better measurements and, and better, you know, but never before there were, were there so much mental health issues uh -huh. in every year of society. That's challenging. And for that, people need coaching, need guidance. And sometimes, you know, after 10 or 15 years of high achieving work, maybe it's not aligned with purpose. So yeah. maybe after 15 years, you have something like, This is, this is not the right thing to do. I want to do the right thing, but I never learned how. Siham, can you get me in, you know, repurposing and, 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 and just, you know, pivoting towards a new career? Uh, I will not, you know, I don't, you know, with the knowledge they have, the experience they have, their background, perfect. But then we we're going to realign this with values and, and how they see life and how they see their relationships and how how how, how sustainable uh, everything the foundations are that's where the, where the real work comes and and it's beautiful to see the the transformation from challenge really to change amazing session i mean we did it on time seven minutes left and we covered all the things we promised to <laughs> top, top, amazing top. i love it. So let's have this golden nugget. So we have seven minutes. We have golden nugget advice to your audience. What do you want to say today? Two lines. Let's say two, lines. two minutes, three minutes. You know, again, success is glorified. We need to redefine success. And this includes failure, stumbling, uh, maybe bankruptcy, scandal, trials, whatever it is. Um, True success is about being resourceful, okay? Uh, and and what I say to these amazing women is you will always be enough. You're going to make mistakes, learn from it, but keep going, you know? Uh, don't let go of perfect, perf you know, being perfect. Mm -hmm. Done is better than perfect. The learning is in a doing. Be grateful. Again, your future will pan out 
just as it's supposed to be. Let your values guide you and be kind always. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely ending. Okay. Lastly, for anyone who wants to dive deeper into your world and connect with you, how can they find you? Social media, website, spell the beans. Best thing. Yeah, the best thing is LinkedIn. You know, you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, just under my name and, uh, you know, just follow me, uh, jump on a call with me if, 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 if you want to know more uh, very specifically. I'm quite, you know, very open and, and accessible. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's just, if it's aligned again, I learned how to say no, so it should be aligned. <laughs> <laughs> we should contribute. I have to, to mention to have here that we both <laughs> met on LinkedIn and we made it happen till this interview and I'm so pleased to have this. I'm happy as well, really. Thank you so much. You are a great host, uh, great prep, and love the questions. It was also challenging for me in the time frame. So uh, great job. Thank Amazing. So Giant Monday Talks. Thank you to Sihab and Kaukabi for joining us. This conversation has been insightful. I enjoy every second because it was challenging to cover all these subjects, just like you said. I know the audience is feeling empowered. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and remember, change is good. It happens anyway. So it's your call. Embrace, reject, fight, smart, adapt, embrace your call, your decision. So to all of viewers, remember to follow, like, subscribe, Monday Talks more for a more insightful conversation like this one. Until next time, stay empowered, keep the smile. Bye, Sam. Bye, take care. Take care. <laughs>